Welcome to Intermath, Grade 6 EQAO Math Prep, and my name is Tonya. Uh, today we're taking up two questions that are both open response questions. One has to do with the fractions, and another one has to do with the money and finance. Let's start with this one. So in this question, you're given a number line from 0 to 3 and just a little bit further down. And then you're given four points represented as fractions or mixed numbers. We need to locate these points on the number line and then determine the value of point E such that it is located between points C and D. Let's start one by one. Point A is 6 over 5. 6 over 5 is an improper fraction, which could be simplified and turned into a mixed number. If I divide 6 by 5, I'll get one whole and one remainder. So as a mixed number, this fraction is 1 and 1 fifths. So it would be located somewhere here. This is my point A. Point B is a simple fraction, 7 over 10. 7 over 10 is less than 1 whole. How do I know that? Because I can always represent 1 whole as a fraction of the same number in the numerator and the denominator. In this case, it would have to be 10 over 10. That's my whole. But I don't have 10 over 10. I have 7 over 10. So it's just under 1. So that's my point B. The next point, point C, is 2 and 1 half. This is easy to find because 2 and 1 half is right here. 2 and a half halfway to 3. This is point C. The next one is 12 over 4. Again, I need to turn this improper fraction x into a mixed number. So I'll divide the numerator by the denominator. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 holes, no fractions. So that point is right here at 3. This is my point D. So I know that point E is located between C and D. So I can choose any value that's located here between C and D, between two and a half and three. For example, I can choose two and three quarters. Two and three quarters. Three quarters means that I went a half and one third more. So uh, two and three quarters is more than two and a half, but it's less than three. You can pick any other value between C and D. This is just a convenient value that is commonly used. Now let's move on to our second question. In this question, you have a relationship between the number of weeks that Joe is saving the money and the amount of money saved per week. X axis, week axis, goes up by ones. And the money axis, the money that we have, goes up by fours. So every box represents $2 in this case. If you count the vertical distance from each point to another point here and here, building a right angle triangle each time, you will see that the increase in the amount that's saved is always $6. $6. $6. The only time that he had more money was the first week. Because if you extend this line here, it doesn't actually go to zero, it goes to the first box, which means 
that at the very, very beginning, Joe had $2 more than on all other weeks. So the first week he had $8 right here. If I wanna build this triangle right here, he had $8 and then $6 savings from then on. So that information helps me find how much he will have on week seven. So if initially he had $8 on the first week, and then during six more weeks, he was saving up $6 each week, then we'll do plus six times $6, right? And then eight plus 36 is, $44 total after seven weeks. Now we need to figure out how many weeks it will take Joe to save up $68 in total. I know that on the first week he saves $8. So I'll remove this eight and know that that is my first week. So $8 that's week one. That leaves me with 60 more dollars that he needs to save. So how many weeks will it take him to save up $60? Since each week he's saving $6 to get to 60, I need to multiply it by 10. So in order to save 60 more dollars, he needs to save up for 10 weeks. So together, this is 11 weeks, which is $8 and $60. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you learned something new and please join us again next week for our next lesson. In the meantime, do not forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and visit our website www.intomath.org. I'll see you next time.